Happy afternoon. I am Dr. B. S. Anil Kumar, a professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering from BNM Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Today, I will teach you the projection of solids. The problem is a square pyramid, 35 millimeter side of base and 60 millimeter axis length rest on HP on one of its line triangular faces. Draw the projection of the pyramid when the axis appears to be inclined to VP at an angle 45 degree. The problem is very simple. Before coming to the problem, let me understand what is meant by a solid. A solid is a three dimensional object having length, breadth and thickness and it is bounded by a slant faces or a parallelogram faces or sometimes combination of plane and curved surfaces. But here we take up a problem called pyramid. A pyramid is a solid or a polyhedron, it consisting of a base and the slant triangular faces. But all the triangular slant faces are meeting a junction called apex or vertex. The line connecting the base corner and the apex is called the slant edge and this is what is called as a slant triangular face and these are called as base edges. The line connecting the apex and the center of the base is called as an axis line or a central line. The pyramid we can name it according to the shape of the rent face called base. If it is a square it is called a square pyramid. If it is a triangle it is called a triangular pyramid. If it is of a pentagonal shape it is called as a pentagonal pyramid. So like that pyramids are named according to the shape of the rent face called base. So now the pyramid how we can keep in different positions. Let us say this is HP and this is VP. A pyramid now called square pyramid, it is resting on HP on its base. If it is resting on HP on its base, the axis is perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP. Let us say the pyramid is resting on HP on its base with a side position. In this position, the axis of the pyramid is perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP. And moreover, all the base edges of the square pyramid is parallel to HP and two of its base edges parallel to VP and as well as perpendicular to VP. It is also keeping resting on HP on one of its edge. If the pyramid is like this, it is resting on one of its edge of the base. If it is like this, it is resting on one of its corner of its base. If it is like this, one of its slant faith is resting on HP. If it is like this, one of its slant edges on HP. In this way, pyramids are named, their, their pyramids are keeping in different number of positions. This problem is very simple. It is square pyramid of side of base, let us say 35 mm, axis height is 60 mm. It is resting on HP on one of its slant triangular face, where axis of the pyramid, the top of the axis is inclined to be at an angle, is turning 45 degree. It draw the top view and front view in this position. Now pyramid is like this. We cannot draw top view front view in this position because the pyramid is inclined to VP and also inclined to HP. When it is inclined to both HP and VP, we cannot draw the top view and front view called orthographic view directly on VP and on HP. How we can solve such problems? We can solve the problems by using change of position method. Initially we make an assumption that the pyramid is resting on HP on its base called base is resting on HP in the side position. Why I made it preferably side on the right side because I want to make it in the next position like one of its slant face is resting on HP. By mistake if I make a square pyramid in the con position if you make it like this it becomes slant edge is resting on HP but not slant triangle face is resting on HP. So it's clearly said that pyramid is resting on HP on one of its slant faces. So initially we make an assumption that a pyramid is resting on HP on its base in the side position. Project the top view and front view. What the top view will be? Top view will be a square. Top view will be a square in which all the slant edges are visible. Front view it looks like a triangle. So that is the initial set of top view and front view. So how we can draw the top view and front view? All the pillars are careful here. You draw an x y line. You just draw an x y line. You draw an x y line with a medium pressure, show VP HP on either side of the XY line. So draw a square in the top view, draw a square in the top view of side of base 35 millimeter, of side of base 35 millimeter, in which 
call the base corners as A, B, C and D. Get the center point of the triangle. Since all the slanted are visible, make it OA dot, OB dot, OC dot and OD dot. This is O1, where the height of base is 35 mm. Get the front view. Draw a projector over a thin projector from all the corners. From O1, you erect a line called axis line, axis line, in which O dash, O1 dash, it measures 60 mm. And connect O to A and connect O to C. So this is my initial set of top view and front view of the square pyramid of side of 35 mm. Is here? So initially, get the top view and front view, top it will be square, front it will be triangle. So next position, you read out the same front view in which one of its slant face is completely resting on HP. How do we read out the same front view in which one of its slant face, this is called A dash and D dash, and this B dash and C dash. This is called as a slant, a triangular face. This slant triangular face, now it is resting on HP. How we can redraw the same front view in which a slant triangular face is resting on HP? With the help of a compass, measure B to O with arbitrarily have to mark here B dash comma C dash and O dash. So I am redrawing the same line here. Measure with help, wait, wait, take the measurement of O dash B dash with the help of a compass, we mark it here. Take the measurement of B to A with the help of compass, with B as center, you just draw a knot. Take the measurement of O A with O as center, cut a knot. And join this, and join this, and join this. So this is, this is my second front view in which one of its land fail is resting on HP. Is resting on what? HP. So this is what is called as A dash and D dash. And this is O1 dash. So I read the same front view in which one of its land is resting on HP. Get the corresponding top view. You draw a very thin projector vertically downward. Draw a projector vertically downward from all the corners. Draw a projector horizontally from DC. Draw a projector from O1. Draw a projector from AB. Now, this is the projector of B and C, this is the projector of B and C, this is B and this is C. It is a projector of A and D, this is a projector of A and this is D. This is O1 and this is O. So, <coughs> this is a top view. To draw a top view, here what we have to think of here is, we have to identify the visible edges and other invisible edges. This is very very important step because identifying the invisible portion of the object is highly what very essential that means uh, the imagined thinking very much essential to understand that which are the objects of the object which are visible and not visible normally visible edges are shown by a dashed light visible i mean invisible edges are shown by dotted line and visible edges are shown by what dark line some of the rules that you have to follow what is the rule here is all the outlines of every view is completely visible whether it is seen or unseen make the boundary a completely dark continuous line so here in the top view, you can observe that my first rule it says make the boundary whether it is seen or unseen, it is completely a dark line. See from here, B to A is the boundary point, A to O is the boundary point, O to C is not a boundary point, O to D is a boundary point. Make the boundary, make the boundary, all the outlines of every view is completely dark line. Now, which is the object from here? My top view is here, you have seen the object from its top. In the top, the top portion of the objects are visible. See, in the top, in the top view, I can see the bay, I can see this triangular bit along with the two slant edges. That means the OA and OD, these two are visible, and the base is completely visible. See, in the top view, since your base of the pyramid, it turns more than 90 degree of rotation, certainly in the top view, I can see the base. Therefore, A to B, B to C and C to D is visible. A to B, B to C, C to D is completely top line. But if you keep the pen on this axis line, these two slant edges, it comes in between the observer and the axis line. Therefore, OA and OD are visible. Behind the axis line called OB and OD are not visible. It's one of the easiest way to identify that, which are the visible objects of the object, which are invisible edges of the object. But these two comes under observer and the access line, therefore OA, OD are visible. OA, OD visible. But OB, OC is not visible, therefore make it OC as a dashed line. 
OC as a dashed line, OB is also a dashed line. And this is my axis line, o, O1, O1. So this is my second set of top and front view. Next, what I can do, make the top of the axis inclined to be at an angle 60 degree like this. So in this position, what happens? In the front view, we can see the base because the apex nearer to the VP. Suppose if you make it like this, the base nearer to VP with respect to the observer, therefore base not visible in this case. So make it like base is visible to the observer. How do we redraw this figure where the top view of the axis, since axis appears to be, therefore we don't require beta angle. Take exactly the upper end length of the axis. Take exactly the upper end of the axis called O over, which is inclined to VP at an angle 45 degree. You draw 45 degree to VP, measure O1 to O and mark here. This is my O1 and this is O. So take the measurement called upper end length, mark it on 45 degree line. But how do we reconstruct this figure where O1, O at an angle 45 degree to VP? Very simple, take the measurement of O1, O upper end length, mark it on 45 degree line. And call this intersection called 1 and call this intersection called 2. 1 is the midpoint of BC, 2 is the midpoint of curl AD. Measure O1 to 1 with mark here, measure O1 to 2 mark here. As you know that the line BC passing through 1 exactly perpendicular to O1 to O. As you see that the line A to AD which is passing through 2 which is exactly perpendicular to O1 to O. So now what to do? From 2 you draw a line perpendicular, from 1 you draw a line perpendicular. So like that you draw perpendicular to O1 to O. Take the measurement with the help of a compass, 1 to C and 1 to B. With 1 as center, mark the C and as well as B. Take the measurement of 2 to D and take the measurement of 2 to A. So now, complete as it is like this, what we have seen in second top view. So that means, I am redrawing the same view called second top view, where the axis appears to be inclined to VP at an angle called 45 degree to VP. So this is my axis line. A big line short line big line short line like that now to get the front view very simple you draw a projector vertically up from all the corners you draw a projector you draw a projector you just draw a projector vertically from what all the corners so this is a projector of c you draw a projector of c so this is what is called as c dash you draw a projector of d you draw a projector of d and this is called as b dash you draw a projector of b and this is b dash this is called o dash and this is what is called as what a dash so and this is my o1 dash this is my what o1 dash called axis line so here also writing a front view my first rule in the rules of visibility what it says all the outlines of every view is completely dark continuous line so for the point z the boundary point is b for the point b the boundary point is o so connect the boundary at the completely dark line for O, A is the completely uh, O to A dark line, A to D and D to C. So this is the complete what? The boundary points. Now, when you see the object from here in the front view, since apex is near to VP, base is to the observer, therefore base is completely visible to the observer. Therefore, make it A, B, C to the dark line. A, B, C to the dark line, make it completely dark. A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A. And also keep the pen on this axis line, here the observer, between the axis line and the observer, we have OA and OB. Therefore, these two slanges are visible, but behind OD and OC are not visible. Therefore, what to do? Make it OA dark and OB already dark, but OD is not visible. Make it OD as a dotted line. And one more thing, this is my axis line. But one thing what you remember, to understand that, dotted line and visible line, they can see dotted line and visible lines can intersect each other, can intersect each other. But two dotted lines or two visible lines should never intersect each other. That's very important. That is one of the easiest way to identify that whether the visible, invisible uh, identification is correct or not. Two visible lines or two dotted lines should never intersect each other and dot, dark line and dotted line can intersect each other. So this is my final set of top view and front view where a square pyramid is resting on HP one of its slant phase in which axis is appears to be inclined to be at an angle 45 degree. So I hope you understand this uh, concept of projection of pyramid uh, when a, a solid is resting in different position. So thank you for your uh, patient listening.